What's up guys, it's Gothic Cornelia aka Sam and today people, today we are playing Asagao Academy Normal Boots Club which is a free game which you can download, the link is down below and we are going to continue our journey. So let's get started. My, arri my and I arrived at Poppy Hall the next morning and immediately it imme also if you don't know I can't talk so every time I record these I just can't talk. So that's the thing. Alright. <clears throat> Maya and I arrived at Poppy Hall the next morning and it immediately became clear. Something had changed. Posters drenched in nausea-inducing. Neon colors were plastered on the lockers. Several students gathered to take a look. Oh, my gosh. We walked over to one of the walls to get a better look. Is that... Jared? When Maya didn't respond, I turned to look at her. The expression on her face told me that her mind had wandered somewhere that would have made a call girl blush. Mm. My, you're drooling. That seemed to jolt her out of her fantasy. She lifted out a sleeve to wipe away any of the drivel on her face. <gasps> I am not! What are these posters for? Well, last year Jared put on a fashion show and looks like he's doing it again this year. I didn't know Jared was into fashion. My shrugged. Hmm. He's not. I waited for some type of clarification. One time in biology, I saw him take off his sweater and his shirt kind of got stuck to it and he pulled it up and I swear he had like 20 abs. I waited in vain. Good morning. Uh, hello, ladies. Oh, no. Maya and I whipped around. There stood Jared in all his glittering, magnificent glory. Maya's face turned to blushing pink. The most beautiful guy in school. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't with him. Hold on. I as much as I love Jared's like jazzy tune, we need to lower it a little. I see you're admiring my totally sweet posters. Um, yeah, they're really something, Jared. Uh, I like your abs. With sudden soul crushing realization of what she said, her expression twisted into a mixture of horror and disgust. Jared was unfazed. Uh -huh. Thanks, but Hannah, it was actually you I wanted to speak to. Why would you want to talk to me? Um. Oh yeah, okay, what's up? Jared looked expectantly at mine. She didn't move. Realizing she was in trouble, I nudged her with my elbow as subtly, 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 subtly as I could. Hey. My, would you go get me a soda? I'm really thirsty. Without a word, Maya scuttled away. Jared turned back to me, a cool glint in his eye. He seemed used to the effect he had on women. What? I wanted to talk to you about the fashion show, actually. You're new here and all, so you probably don't know, but every year I like to put on a little fashion show to showcase my modeling skills. What? Wait, what? Hmm. You know, just to make sure people don't forget what I'm capable of. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a stack of glossy photos and thrust them into my hands. I stared down to them in awe. <laughs> this is the best <laughs> those pictures though oh my god I can't <laughs> okay hold on I flipped through them starting to notice a pattern as you can tell my beauty is something that simply can't go to waste I like to hold a fashion show here at Oscar Academy to ensure everyone gets a yearly dose of pro Jared I flipped to the last photo. He shot up my neck and into my ears. Surely this was some kind of joke. I shoved the stack of photos back at him, wiping my sweaty palms against my skirt. What does this have to do with me? Ah, that might have been a touch rude. Jared, as smooth as ever, simply smiled. You're perfect. I think you have potential, Mahano. He suddenly leaned close to me, so close in fact that I could smell his cologne. A musky, sweet aroma of earthy scents and ham? What exactly? Jared shifted, his mouth so close to my ear I could feel his heat. For greatness. He reached into his shirt pocket and retrieved a small slip of paper with his quivering hands I accepted it. All right. My card. My number is on the bottom. If you're inter ever interested, I could teach you a thing or two about modeling. I stared at the card in my hand, feeling that if I looked away, it would disappear. By the time I gathered the, c the courage to face him again, Jared was gone. 
Feeling quite dizzy, I headed for class. The business card strangled to death in my white knuckled hand. By the time I got through the milling students to the classroom, Mai was sitting at her desk, face down and completely still. I took my seat and twisted around to poke the deject dejected my shape peep. She didn't budge. Hey. My, my. I heard a muffled groan of despair. I'm such a social disaster. <laughs> no, you're not. I tried to sound comforting, but I was never good at this sort of thing. Mai lifted her head from her desk. What's that? She motioned to the business card that was still in my hand. I set it in front of her. Mai appraised it for a long minute with a blank face, as if I had set a rare artifact in front of her that she didn't actually believe was real. Then her eyebrows pulled together. He gave you his number? Well, well, yeah. Sort of. I mean, not really. He said I should call him if I wanted if wanted him to teach me how to model like him. It was embarrassing to even say the words. Even say. And the words felt awkward in my mouth. The moment I said them out loud, I wish I could grab them back and swallow them. I expected Mai to give me a once-over before making an off-the-cuff comment about how I wasn't nearly pretty enough to be a model. But she didn't. He, like, totally wants to get with you. Her tone was so matter-of-fact, I gasped. What? Gaped. What? N no, he doesn't. Why would you say that? Bingo. Okay, Hana, I've taken enough sex ed classes to know when a guy fully wants you and, like, Jared fully wants you. Mortified, I snatched the business card back off her desk and shoved it in my jacket pocket, turning away. My cheeks felt like they were on fire. By now, the classroom was filled with students. They chattered amongst themselves, but the white noise of their conversations wasn't loud enough to draw my out. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see John and PBG seated at their desks at the back of the room. <laughs> I'm taking, I'm talking serious grabby hands in the back. This dad's Camaro here. You're getting, to, you're going to make babies with Pro Jared, Hana. Little glittering Jared babies. No, I'm not. You're totally crazy. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Miss Shizuka, like some kind of angel, cleared her throat at the front of the class. I exhaled gratefully and slipped down my seat. When class finally ended, Mai and I headed for the cafeteria, the incident forgotten in our hurried attempt to explain Miss Shizuka's scandalous last relationship. Seriously, he spent, like, all this time trying to choose between her and some dead chick who only liked him because he looked like her ex-boyfriend. I mean, who does that? We got our food and hesitated in the middle of the room, looking at the normal goods table. Neither wanted to go up, neither one of us wanted to go up and demand a seat, especially after wiggling our way in the day before. What if they had changed their minds? But Satch, noticing us standing like lost lambs in the middle of the room, waved us over. Mm -hmm. My god. These voices! The voice acting always gets me. <laughs> okay. Hey, girl. How was class? Oh, you know. Normal. Satch nodded and turned away, having been in the middle of talking to Josh. That Was that awkward? That was awkward, despite how familiarly he treated me. I still didn't know how to talk to him, or any of them. I looked across the table and locked eyes with PBG, who stared at me like I was a baby German shepherd. You. All right. Cookies! What? what? Oh, sick. You brought us cookies! You're the best, Gerard! Paul sprang out of his chair and practically tackled Gerard. Huh? Whoa, calm down. There's more than enough cookies to go around. Gerard started passing the cookies around the table, but paused. Hmm? You? You're back again. He looked at Maya and me. I tried to ignore the disappointment on his face. Wow. Here. He handed us each a cookie, then headed back across the cafeteria. I stared at the small chocolate chips melting in the warm cookie. Did he not want us here? But, but he was so nice yesterday. I didn't even want to eat the cookie. Not if he was going to be as two-faced as that. Hey! Watch where you're walking next time. A sheepish Gerard stood next to a short, skinny boy who was holding his tray above his head. Um. I'm sorry, I'll be more careful. Oh, you, you're from Normal Boots. Wait, you're the guy who plays with itty-bitty kitties, aren't you? The boy sneered. How the hell did you manage to get in with a group like that? Huh? Huh, they're my friends. Playing with those stupid dolls? You're an embarrassment. The kid's friends were hitting his shoulders, looking from Gerard to our table with panicked eyes. I like what I like. I think they're fun. Tch. Whatever. The kid was let off by his friends. 
Gerard came back and sat down at the table. <laughs> that was weird. Gerard sat down and began happily munching on his cookie, looking for looking for all the world like he didn't even care what just happened. I scanned the cafeteria for the boy who heckled him and found him sitting alone at the table, his head in his hands. His friends left him behind. What was that about? Oh, that? I used to get it all the time. I collect itty-bitty kitty figurines. You know, the kid show with the five kittens who live in Kitten Town? They were originally supposed to have magic powers, but whatever. I collect them, their figurines. They're so cute. I've almost got them all. I'm only missing Princess Pumpernickel. She's the rarest. But why was that guy making fun of you? Doesn't it bother you? I was afraid of bringing up bad feelings, but Gerard just shook his head. It looks kind of weird, right? A teenage boy collecting toys meant for little girls? Uh -huh. But I like them, so I don't let it bother me. Sorry I didn't bring enough cookies the first time, Hana. I forgot that you were joining us again, but I'm glad you're here. I bit my lip. See, Hana? He was being nice the whole time, and here you were jumping to conclusions. Hey, your cookie will get cold if you don't eat it. I unwrapped the cookie. Scents of chocolate and cinnamon hit me. I broke off a piece and popped it in my mouth. Gerard whispered something into Nick's ears, who started laughing so hard milk came out of his nose. Was he really okay with people making fun of him? I couldn't believe it. I didn't believe it. In my old school, people made fun of me every day. It was hell. There was no way he could just... brush it off like that. Now when I tried so hard to do the same... But as I finished the cookie and started on my ramen, Ger and Gerard continued to laugh at the rest of normal boots, I wondered whether it was Im as impossible as I always thought. Hana? Oh, no. Hana, oh, no. can you pass me some pepper? I got it! Here, here Jared! Uh. Thanks. Uh, what's your name again? Um. It's Mai. Nice. Thanks, Mai. Hana. Well, Hana, you ready to head back? Huh? Oh, yeah. Did my look sad? Or did I imagine it? We threw our trays on the racks and headed out of the cafeteria. As we waved to normal boots and Gerard waved, and Gerard cheerily waved back, a sudden pang hit my stomach. Was it guilt? After class ended that day, Mai said she had volleyball practice and sped off. Thankfully, this time I knew where I was going, so I headed straight back and collapsed on my bed. It was nice to have some time to myself. After everything that happened, I felt like I was going crazy. I could use some relaxation. I didn't have a computer or a TV, and the book Satch gave me was really good, but sometimes a bit hard to read. Instead, I took out my phone and started flipping through the app store. Hmm. Nothing really looked good. Wait, what was this? I sat up. Dumba Doom's Revenge. Face off against three other players as you catch monsters, raise them, and use their unique skills to aid you on your puzzle-solving quest. Only you can save Meta World from its ignorant king and utter destruction. Now with the single player campaign, raise crops to feed your monsters. If you're lucky, they'll transform into cute girls. What the hell? It looks so stupid. But it couldn't hurt to give it a try. I downloaded it and started up the game. Welcome to Dumba Doom's Revenge! I skipped the intro sequence and quickly hit single player. Loading! The load times were terrible. Suddenly, a cartoonish hilly valley met my eyes, panning over to a white castle nestled into a cliff. A lazy king lay asleep on a throne when a squat silver soldier ran into the room. King Dumbadoom, quickly, we're under attack! Oh, just send the first battalion off, please. I'm rather tired. The knight left, and the screen faded to a world map showing a horde of black bobs, blobs on the right side of the screen. A small group of knights ran up against the blobs and were instantly devoured. One of the black blobs split out a helmet with a skull inside. What the hell is this game? Things continued in this way, with the king sending off his battalions haphazardly until no one was left. Then the king awoke in his chair and turned to the screen. You! <laughs> Me? Only you can save my kingdom, please! Mm. I don't think I can save your kingdom. You're the one menacing it. How dare you! What the hell? Can this thing hear me? You are no longer my advisor. Go back to your home village and let me deal with this myself! A tiny sprite with brown hair flew across the world map, bouncing into a bunch of red houses. I guess my only choice is to raise an on army of monsters myself, overthrow the king, and then raise an army to fight the oncomedy blippity bloops. Mm. How the hell did you come to that conclusion? Finally, I was allowed to play the actual game. A dozen, a, la, 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 la. a dozen multicolored blocks appeared on the screen. The monsters I was initially giving could only hit their corresponding colors and couldn't activate any traps. Supposedly, more monsters could eventually learn how to set traps, and you could do certain combos to hinder the opposing team. 
If you had an attractive girl on your team, she can use an ability to double the rate of your opponent's blocks or have the clock's time. But that had a drawback for you too, and could be used as an asset by the opponent. Not to mention that certain color combinations between girls and monsters activated secret unique abilities that you could also evolve your monsters and feed them things. How the heck am I supposed to remember all this? I failed the first few times, but quickly got the hang of it. It was just about being adaptable and maintaining a flexible strategy after all. My eyes started to hurt and I looked at the time. Eight o'clock? It had been four hours? I had reading to do. I grabbed my textbook, flicked my radio on, and began to read. There have been many tales of times when the moon has fallen on other planets, the most popular of times being the myth of Termina. However, these myths have never proven to be more than a hallucination. My eyes blurred over my astronomy textbook. I yawned. The Schubert piece floating from my radio made me want to go to sleep, and I toyed the idea of going to class without finishing my reading. Who cared how many times the moon was supposed to fall, especially when time travel was involved? Hana! My bus in through the door and flung herself across the room and grabbed my radio. Hey, hey where have you been? Mm. What are you doing? Mm. Give me a second, we're missing it. <laughs> there we go. Hmm. But I swear that dog was the living worst. <laughs> That's why you need a bird like my lovely jock. Watch your tongue. What's this? Mm. Shh. Hey. So the time has come to make an official announcement. This year, just like every other year, the Noble Boots Club will be participating in the video game tournament. Yeah. As PG applauded as if you were a crowd of 30 people, I shot a puzzled glance at mine. I hope you guys will support us again this year, and best of luck to our competitors. You guys are going down. And now for some music. My turn down the radio inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, what did you want? Um, what was that? PB and J. It's PB and John's radio show. They have a radio show? What do they do on it? Uh... Oh, you know, they talk and stuff. Play music sometimes. Everyone in school listens to it. I'm so glad you brought a, your radio. I forgot mine at home. And a video game tournament? Yeah, didn't you hear them talking about it the other day? No. Come to think of it, I hadn't paid much attention to their conversation. I was too busy worrying about myself. Uh -huh. Every year they have a game tournament down at Higanaba Mall. Lots of people come to compete, but everyone knows the real fight is between Normal Boots and Hidden Block. Is that what they do? Video game tournaments? Yeah, that's why nobody's ever joined them since their inception. Uh -huh. Well, I guess partly they're a group of friends who just happen to make a club together, but also... Unless you're really talented, you just drag them down. Ouch. Um, Not all of them are so harsh, but some of them? Well, my glanced away, but I felt like I knew who she was talking about. Hmm. That's too bad. The conversation I had had before with Jimmy and Caddy came to mind. Had they really thought I was joining the Normal Boots Club? There was no way. I hadn't played a video game since I was a kid. My father gave me a 4DS when I left home, but... The night before I left home for Asagao, my dad came to visit me in my room. I had packed the few things I owned into a briefcase and a single cardboard box set to be shipped with the train. I sat around and stared at the box, somewhat bitter. I barely even needed it. I didn't own much. Hana? Yeah, Dad? My father stood in front of me, a weary smile on his face. Even though he tried to hide it, I could see by the deep wrinkles around his eyes and forehead that he was tired. Sad. The past few years had taken their toll on him, and I hadn't eased things. You'll be leaving tomorrow. Yeah. A heavy silence hung between us, filling my childhood bedroom like styrofoam. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, I am. He nodded and glanced around my room, at the pale blue walls, the broken clock above my old desk, the scuff marks around the doorframe from where I ran into it as a kid. I lived in this house almost my whole life, ever since moving after kindergarten. It was everything I knew, but now it was too much for me. The decision to... The decision to transfer to Asago didn't come lightly. First, it was a prestigious institution with a highly prized reputation. Only the best of the best, touting either great grades, impressive talent, or lots of money could get in. I was none of these things, but I made it in regardless. Part of me suspected I was a charity case. I received a small scholarship, and it would no, lock, no doubt look good to, for the academy to have a fostered, to fostered a poverty-stricken 
to have fostered a poverty-stricken child into its walls. And despite the fact that my father couldn't afford it, even with the scholarship, he guaranteed he'd support me if I went. I looked again at the wrinkles in his face, at his sagging shoulders. He pressed his hands against his body to hide the way they shook. All for me. He'd, been, he'd be all alone. I'm glad you're going. I think this will be good for you. Yeah. I wish I could say something else, but nothing came. Well, honey, just in case you get homesick, I brought a present for you. A uh, present? From his pocket, my dad produced a shining pink Gintendo 40S and placed it into my hands. For you. But... Why? How? Dad, this costs so much. You're already killing yourself to let me go. Why would you? Tears fell from my eyes as my dad smiled. Nothing is too good for you, my dear Hana. His voice was trembling. You're my pride and joy. You deserve so much better than you've gotten from me. Dad. Go to Asagao. Have fun. Make a lot of friends. And when you get homesick, you play that. I'll make do. I stood up and hugged him, burying my face in his scratchy sweater and an oatmeal smell. I miss you. I'll miss you, my little Hana. But the thing is, he forgot to give me a cartridge to play with. Now I glance at the machine hidden by my desk lamp. My watch me carefully. Well, you never know what could happen! Well, what do you mean? <laughs> my giggled. Nothing, nothing at all. But I just got back, so I've got work to do. Work, right! PBG and I still had the project due, and we hadn't meant to discuss it at all. He said he had it under control, but I should probably make a backup plan, just in case. It wasn't that I didn't trust him, it was just that... Okay, I didn't trust him. Sighing, I worked a kink out of my shoulder. It looked like it would be a long night. Alright, and with that, that is where we're going to end this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you like it down below, please subscribe, and... I will see you next time. Bye.